Bruce Sedeno here for the Cash Confident Podcast with you today, and we are talking about asking for a raise. So that's what we're going to get into. So as you all are fully aware, inflation has been really, really driving up costs on everything. I can say for me personally, my grocery bill has gone up substantially. Also, I mean, my kids are teenagers, and so they're the hungriest people that ever walked the face of the planet. You know, my electricity bill has gone up, my car insurance, my homeowner's insurance, just all of my bills have been really, really kind of going up, you know, 10 and 20%, right? And I'm obviously not the only person experiencing this. We can see that our interest rates are going up. And so basically, this is a situation where trying to save, trying to cut back starts to become like really fruitless, you know, like Sometimes we just have to ask for the raise, right? And so I'm going to give you some tips today about asking for a raise. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is I want you to calculate how much it is that you really want and need, right? And so this number is not about your your necessarily, it's not about your job. It, this number is about you and what you want. Now, from there, we're going to go and we're going to look at like, well, well what's reasonable for the you know, for the work that I do, right? Like, so listen, when we're being paid by somebody else, we don't necessarily have like an unlimited income ceiling. Somebody else's business has to be able to provide that, right? And so when you're thinking about your employer, they still have to be able to make money on your employment. That's the that's the way that it goes. So then I want you to look and see, all right, well, is this current position at this current employer, is this, is this, going to be the place that I stay. And I want to be really frank and honest with this is not all employers businesses are able to provide raises. Like it's just the way that it is. Sometimes you have to maybe be willing to switch employers or to go for a promotion and not just a raise. And uh, the difference there, I'm going to just point out in case you're you're not sure. A raise is just asking for more money uh for essentially the work that that you're doing, right? Asking for raises you know, and that may be some shift in responsibility. Asking for a promotion is asking for a different level of responsibility. It's asking for a different job title, right? And so they're they're a little bit different, but there, there's both ways, you know, you can ask for a raise to make more money, or you could go for a promotion to make more money, or you could potentially look for a promotion outside of the company that you're in, or ask, you know, look for a raise at the same level for for something that you're not in, right? Now, some other things to consider when you're in this stage is, is there anything else that you might be willing to negotiate on and not just more money? For example, like flex time or uh, more vacation time or um, I don't know, things like that, but, you know, more, a better title, right? There's, there's those sorts of things that sometimes we can put into our negotiations that sometimes sweeten the deal for one of us uh, that makes something, you know, something feasible, right? So we want to start to get clear on like what it is that you even want, right? Do you want a promotion? Do you want to raise, you know, how much, how, what's the, what's the difference? What's the difference that you're looking for? Okay. Next, we want to look at the value that we're bringing to the organization, and so this, uh, this is where we start to look at like, you know, what we're, what we're bringing to the table, the amount of work that we're doing, the quality of the work that we're doing, how that work essentially makes money or doesn't lose money or helps the organization run much more smoothly. Now, depending on what kind of employer you work for, like this, you know, let's just say you're a teacher, chances are you're, you might just have to like switch a district, right? Like a lot of times there's not really room for negotiations or raises unless you're just on the, you know, the step, you know, you do this, the step ladder, right? Um, so, but we want to be clear about the value that we bring to the organization. We want to start to really, really think about that. I want you to look specifically at responsibilities that you take on that are not in your job description. I want you to be thinking about ways that whatever you do has increased efficiency for the organization or increased the ability to make money or increased the ability to save money or, you know, spend less money. Um, things that have made a really big difference to your clients or your customers, right? So I want you to start to think about those sorts of things. 
and start to total that up, right? So that way, when you go in to ask for this raise, you're not going to be wobbly. Like you're going to be like, I'm asking for more money and I'm definitely like, it's the work that I'm providing is definitely worth that. So where we don't want to go in our mindset is, is it's not about you, right? This isn't about you getting paid. It's not about your worth as a person. It's about the value that you bring to the table, right? That's really what your employer is paying you for. They're not paying you for your personal worth. Um, you know, they're, and they truly like, it's none of their business about your expenses, right? So you, when you're coming in to ask for raise, you want to be really clear on like the value that you bring to the table in your work, right? And th that's a little bit of a difference because sometimes people get really personal about it. And they're like, well, personally, I can't afford this or I can't afford that, or I want this or I want that. And it's like, okay, great. But, um, they're not, that's not your employer's like concern really. It's, it's, the job that you're doing, right? So um, make that appointment. All right. Oh, sorry. So get really clear on that. So that way, when you make the appointment um, to ask for the things that you want, you you feel stable, you feel solid, you feel like this is um, this is reasonable. What you're asking for is reasonable because if you're wobbly and if you feel unsure, you're just not going to do as well. Right. Like you're you're probably going to mm, step back or bumble on the negotiation. Right. And so you need to be able to stand firm. All right. And so then you make the appointment and then you want to clearly ask for what you want in very plain language. And I would honestly, if it was me and everybody's negotiation style is a little bit different, but I would ask for what I want up front. Give them a minute to answer. And if there's if there's a need to you know, bring up the value that I bring to the table, I would be really well prepared with that. Like, hey, I'm doing X, Y, and Z work that's actually outside of my job description. It's above, you know, this is really above and beyond what I'm currently, you know, being paid for. Um, you know, I've done this, I've done that, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished that. Like, you want to make the case that like one that you're worth keeping because this is the kind of thing that it's like if your boss says no to you, you could potentially go work for somebody else. And it costs a lot of money to train employees. It's, you know, and you have to hire and there's paperwork to do. And so in general, you know, employers like to keep their employees, right? Um, so you you want to be able to make that case clearly if necessary, but I would start by just asking for what you want. Just ask for it. Hey, listen, I'm asking for a raise. I want this, you know, I want my salary to be this. I want my hourly rate to be this. Um, if there's responsibilities that you want to shift out, I want to shift into these kind of responsibilities and put these responsibilities onto somebody else. Um, you know, and depending on the size of the company that you work at and the level of, of corporate, sometimes that's like a really great conversation to have with your boss. Like if you're like, hey, these things are, let's get somebody in that's a little bit less expensive and let me do some, you know, higher responsibility type stuff, right? So you want to ask clearly for what you want and give them a minute to answer, right? And so sit in the uncomfortable silence for a second, um, you know, and then if you need to make your case, make your case. And one tip is to not really make this about you, like personally, like this isn't about, you know, like I wouldn't come at asking for a raise, like, hey, the prices of everything have gone up. I'm not able to afford my life because anybody that's listening to that is like, okay, well, that's just really a you problem. Like you really want to be coming at this, like I'm bringing this much value to the table and I want to be paid for what I'm bringing to the table. My work is worth this much, um, you know, and I want to be paid this much for that work, you know, so just make sure that you keep it really, really clear about that because sometimes, you know, people are like, oh my, you know, when I talk to a lot of people about their money and it's like, okay, well, if you're going to ask for a raise, it's, it's not really going to work out so great if you're just like, oh, I can't afford certain things. It's like, all right, well, you know, what's, how are you, uh, let's just keep it on the work, I guess is probably the best way to say it. Just keep it on the work that you're doing. And then the last thing that I want to say is sometimes we need to be prepared to, to switch. Like sometimes we need to be able to be like, I will leave this job. Like there are some places where there's just not room for 
that much financial advancement. Right? I've worked with many, let's just say municipal employees, right? And there's just not really room for advancement. There's just not. And typically those people are going to be a little bit underpaid. Um, if the benefits are worth it to you, consider that before, you know, consider that as you're thinking about switching. But but really like be prepared to start to look around because that's one of the things that really helps to stay uh, on the up and up financially is a lot of times we get a little pigeonholed in a, in a position. Um, there may be a lot of other people. There may be, you know, certain things like that happened a while ago um, where, you know, somebody may you like somebody got the impression that you weren't promotable you know, for whatever reason. I'll give you an example. This is my tea, right? This I'll spill my own tea. I worked a, at a local nonprofit for years before I got into finance. And the week that I got back from having a baby was the same week that they asked me to take over as the interim executive director. I'd been writing grants and doing administrative work for the organization before that. And I remember I told one of the board members, like, I don't want that job. Right? And it was the literal week that I'd gotten back from maternity leave. Like my literal boobs were full of breast milk. Like I was like, I'm I'm not there yet. And then as a year went on, they started to look for somebody and I was like, hey, I'd actually like to be considered for this. But it, it was like too late. Like they had already they'd already put me in the bucket of like not not promotable in that way. Right. And so I I had to leave. I had to move, right? I had to go move on. And so that's that's just one of the examples, right? So, um, but I've seen, I've even seen like teachers and nurses and places where the, the, the pay scale is pretty out there, right? Like the pay scale is not super negotiable, right? And places like where the pay scale is not super negotiable, sometimes you have to, you have to just be willing to move, take it as a stepping stone. So anyways, I'm just going to put that out there because sometimes that's the case. It's like, at one point I was talking to a woman who asked for a raise and her employer was like, no, you can't have a raise. And it wasn't because the work she was doing wasn't worth it. It was just because whatever, whatever was going on for that employer, they couldn't do it. And that's a thing in businesses. Not all businesses are run super, with super flush cash flow. There's not always, there's not always the resources available to be able to do that. And that's not on you. That's why I'm saying sometimes we just have to be willing uh, to move on when that time is right. But anyways, um, you know, every year you want to be asking for a raise, like ever, or applying for a promotion, and ask, you know, like if you want to keep growing financially. Um, these are things that we want to get into. You know, get into our, you know, our regular, and it's uncomfortable, like our regular uh, routine, not like, a, you know, daily routine, but like an annual routine. And a lot of women don't do this because it's uncomfortable because a lot of women don't even like to ask for anything. And I, crap, man, I was definitely one of them. Um, so you may want to practice this with a friend. You may want to practice with your spouse. You may want to practice with somebody who's even going to give you a little bit of pushback or going to be annoyed with you, you know, while you're practicing. So that way you could learn to hold your own in that negotiation and just be able to stand in the discomfort of like, yeah, you're annoyed with me and I want, you know, I want what I want. And so, um, so these are some of the things that you could do while you're, while you're asking for a raise. So I just wanted to put this out there. It's springtime. It's a good time to ask for a raise right before the summer. Usually the gas prices go up in the summer. So now's the time to get that in. All right. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I will talk to you next week. It was my pleasure and joy to talk with you today. Thank you for listening. If you found value in our conversation, I kindly ask you to share the show with a friend who deserves to unleash her financial power. Your feedback is so, so valuable to me. So please take a moment to leave a review. Together, we can amplify the message and bring more money into the hands of good women. For ongoing guidance and unwavering support on your financial journey, I invite you to join the Cash Confident community. Visit www.cashconfident.com slash join to become part of our powerful community of women where we uplift and inspire one another to reach new heights of financial success. 
Remember, you possess the power to shape your financial destiny. And with the Cash Confident Podcast and the support of our remarkable community, you are unstoppable. Embrace your financial power, create the life you desire, and let's ignite a movement of cash confident women who are transforming the world. One dollar, one decision at a time.